Oh, Mr. Brent. Yeah, what is it, Perkins? We've just received word from Quano Basin, Mr. Brent. Halliday refuses to sell his line. Oh, he does, eh? All right, I'll put in my own line and we'll squeeze him out. Send for McMaster. Yes, sir. And uh, Dan Waring. All right. We've come for a time, Mr. Holliday. We're quit. Not me, boss. But you, you can't walk out on me now. You know how much Dad's depending on you, men. I'm sorry, Miss Mary, but we can't risk our necks any longer. Especially when we can go to work for the Brent line. They haven't been having any trouble at all. All right. Pay them off, Mary. You boys ain't gonna be happy working for the Brent lines. I think y'all are making a terrible mistake. Come on, Cannonball. Just a minute, Waring. I'm giving you warning. Now you can tell it to your boss, Brent. Stop trying to wreck my line. You're barking up the wrong tree, Halliday. You can't accuse me of hiring outlaws for anybody. Yes, I can. And what's more, if I ever catch any of them red-handed, I'll kill you as well. You better go, Dan. The stage has to go out on schedule. Just remember what I said, Waring. It's not a threat. It's a promise. Did y'all hear what my boss said? And he allows to do it, too. I wouldn't bet on it, Cannonball. Neither would I. His bark's worse than his bite. Well, maybe so, but I'm worried. <laughs> Get ready, boys. Here comes our stage, with old man Brent. Come on, boys. Let's give him a welcome. Thank you, boys, for a real welcome. Well, Dan, how's our new line shaping up? Fine. But Halliday's accusing me of trying to wreck his line. The old fool even threatened to kill me. Oh, he's just bitter because he knows that postal contract is as good as ours. Just the same. I'm not going to have him or anyone else going around calling me a skullduggar. Anyone who does would be crazy. Say, who's behind these outlaws anyway? I wouldn't worry too much about them or Halliday either. Which way's the hotel? It's right up the street. I'll show you. See you later, Dan. All right. Nice job you've been doing, McMasters. Thanks. 
It hasn't been too easy covering up my tracks, but Waring and the help haven't got wise so far. So I've gathered. Halliday and his daughter riding gun guard on their own stage. Are they that short-handed? Yeah. I'm going to see to it that they stay that way. Well, Tex, a couple more hours and we'll be in Quarto Basin. That won't make me mad. You know, I'm so hungry I could chew the hind leg off a steer. <laughs> You sure saved our hides. My name is Halliday. This is my daughter, Mary. Your daughter? Well, for a girl, I'd say that's mighty fine driving, miss. Thank you. Dad always wanted a boy. I guess he satisfied himself by raising me like one. <laughs> You've been having trouble with outlaws lately? Plenty. At least I have. Those Jaspers are working for the Brent stage line. The Brent line? That's my opinion. You see, we're both uh, bidding for the Quanto Basin mail contract. And Dan Waring, their manager, is doing everything he can to freeze me out. Well, you're wrong about Waring, Mr. Holliday. You see, he's my uncle, and a straighter man never lives. Well, mister, we're beholden to you and your friend. But after what we've been through, it'll take more than words to convince me that he and Brent ain't in cahoots. Let's go, Mary. Looks like there's a storm brewing, Jeff. Yeah, good thing we decided to come up and lend Uncle Dan a hand. Let's go. Well, you here again, Ethelbert? Now, listen, Nellie, and I told you not to call me that name. I can't help it if folks took advantage of me when I was a defenseless little baby. Oh, no, I suppose you can. Uh, sit down and rest your carcass. Thank you, Nellie. What have you got behind your back? Oh, I just brought you a tomato. Some folks sent me a whole crate of them from back east. Why, this is the first tomato I've seen in years. Oh! Where are you going? To get the rest of the tomatoes. What happened? A couple of strangers horned in. Just as me and the boys were about to close in on the stage. Don't worry, boss. We'll take good care of Halliday on his next trip out. That mail contract means a lot to me. And if we don't get it, I'm... I ought to shoot you two coyotes here and now. That's strange talk from you, Waring. What's the matter? Aren't you feeling well? All the years I worked for you, Brent, I thought you was a square shooter. I find out you're nothing but a low-down crook. I can see why you put me in charge here, using my reputation to cover up your dirty work. Well, you're not getting away with it. I'm not only quitting, but as soon as Halliday gets back, I'm going to tell him the truth. Why, 
Why don't you let me drill him? Use your head. We'll find a better time and place. What's the matter, Sandry? Those two riders have stopped us this morning. They're headed this way. Don't get so excited. I'll take care of them. Get in the back. Howdy, gents. Howdy. I'm looking for my uncle, Dan Waring. Oh, you must be Jeff Waring. That's right. I'm Brent. Glad to know you. Tex Harding. How are you? Hello. Dan told me he was expecting you any day. Is he around? No, he just stepped out. He'll be back any minute. Have a chair? Thanks. Boss, Waring's waiting to see you in the office. Waring? Yes, sir. Well, Waring, what is it? Halliday, I had my eyes open a little while ago, and I've come to tell you... I tell you, I, I didn't kill Waring. Of course he didn't. That isn't a murderer. You say you fired a couple of shots at the killer? Yes, but all I saw was a glimpse of his back as he ran away. Oh, he's lying, Sheriff. He killed Waring. He threatened he would. Ask his daughter if he didn't. Ask Cannonball. Ask Larry and the other boys. Dad was angry. You know what a temper he has. He's innocent, as innocent as you are. You've had enough talk, Sheriff. You know your job. I'm sorry, Halliday. But I'll have to hold you for trial before the circuit judge. But he won't get here for months. That'll mean that I'll lose out on the postal contract. I can't help that. Cannonball and I'll keep the line running, Dad. We'll make a fight of it. I can't begin to tell you how sorry I am about your uncle. He was one of my best men. And if you'll let me, I'd like to make it up to him somehow. What do you mean by that? It was his idea to make this the best of all my stage lines. If you'd like to carry on for him, the job is yours. You mean take charge of the line? Exactly. I'll take it. Do the best I can. That basket looks sort of heavy. You better let me carry it. I don't need any help from you or from anyone working for Brent. You sure look pretty when you get angry. I like my girlfriends that way. The name is Halliday, and I'm not your girlfriend. Chicken and flew upstairs, goodbye, goodbye. All caught a chicken and flew upstairs, goodbye, lies of Jane. Oh, how I love her, ain't that a shame? Oh, how I love her, goodbye, lies of Jane. Chase that squirrel, goodbye, goodbye. Chase that pretty girl around the world, goodbye, Liza Jane. Oh, how I love her, ain't that a shame? Oh, how I love her, goodbye, Liza Jane. Six shooters on and gone again. Goodbye, Liza Jane. Oh, how I love her. Ain't that a shame? Oh, how I love her. Goodbye, Liza Jane. Chuck. One wheel off in the actual dragon. 
goodbye, goodbye. You can't ride in a little red wagon, goodbye, Liza Jane. Oh, how I love her, ain't that a shame? Oh, how I love her, goodbye, Liza Jane. <laughs> wonderful, Bob, wonderful. <laughs> I told you to stay away from here. I just dropped in a minute to see Nellie. She's no different from the others here. Now, Miss Mary, get back to work. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait a minute, Miss Halliday. Aren't you carrying your bitterness a little too far? I'll thank you to keep your nose out of my business. But this is my business. You seem to forget it was my uncle who was killed. But Dad didn't kill him. I never said he did. That's what you think. That's why you're helping that low-down crook Brent ruin our line. That little girl certainly hasn't got a very good opinion of us. Tex, I'm beginning to think there's more going on around here than we know about. Meaning what? Well, hasn't it struck you strange that the outlaws never bother our stage line? Brent might be back of all this holiday trouble, making sure that he gets those mail contracts. If he is, he's using an outside gang. All the hands here seem honest. Maybe we'd better do some checking up. Why do you think I took this job, Tex? I'm going to find out who killed my uncle and why. Where are you going to start? I don't know. Maybe the Durango Kid will ride again. Take that rifle. You waste your time, mister. We don't care nothing but mail on this stage. We ain't particular what we steal. Get busy, boys. Someday they're going to hang you sidewinders from the raft. Maybe so if they catch us. Look, Miss Mary, they turned the horses loose. <laughs> Say, y'all can't do this to us. How are we going to get back to Quanto Basin? Try walking. It's good for what ails you. <laughs> Miss Mary, my feet ain't going to like me by the time we get back to town. We'll try to find the horses first, Cannonball. There's a chance that they won't stray very far while they're in harness. Absolutely. We'll get back to the hideout and burn the letters and bags. You head for town and report to the boss. I guess losing this mail will put a crimp in that holiday line for good. Say, you're right about that. You know, we ought to hit the boss for another bonus. After all, we're doing the dirty work. Reach and be quick about it! The Durango Kid. That's right, Miss Annie. Set your guns, left hand, and don't make any wrong moves. I'll take those mailbags. Thanks for saving me the trouble. Now, ah. who's boss of this outfit? All right, never mind. But get this straight. I'm taking over this territory. From now on, you boys better make yourselves plenty scared. Come on, right now! I'll get back to town, tell the boss what happened. What's up? Plenty. We were held up by the Durango Kid. The Durango Kid? Yeah. Said he was going to take over this neck of the woods. I don't like this. I heard him down in Texas. He...
wonder who this horse belongs to. It's his, the Durango kids. Yeah, he's probably in the hotel right now. Maybe ransacking my room. You better stay here with his horse. kid just tried to rob me. Rango kid, did you get him? No, he got away. Lose much? Haven't checked yet. Nothing in my room worth stealing. Got all my money on me, I think. I reckon losing the mail just about ruins our chance for the government contract, eh, Miss Mary? I'm afraid so, Cannonball. But we've got him back now. Compliments of the Durango kid. Well, I'll be a one-eyed monkey. You mean Miss May we ain't licked yet, as long as the Durango kid's helping us out. How'd the masquerade work out? It's Brent, all right. And here's why he's so anxious to get a hold of the local mail contract. That's it. He's using an outside gang. But McMaster's giving the orders. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's round him up and turn him over to the sheriff. That won't do us any good, Tex. If they refuse to talk, we'll just be up a tree. Besides, this letter isn't proof enough. I guess not. We've got to get Brent to hang himself. Well, meantime, what about Mary? She can't go on running that stage line with just Cannonball. We've got to see that she gets some help. Saw the stuck on her? Oh, what gave you that idea? How good an actor are you, anyway? Well, I don't know. Why? Never mind. Come on inside. Bob, you think she'll have me? Of course she will. Remember, faint heart never won, fair lady. You think nothing wrong with my heart, Bob? My knee's kind of wobbly. Oh, go on. We'll be right behind you. I'll bring you some flowers. Why, this is mighty sweet of you, Cannonball. What made you think of me? Oh, I just figured that, uh, uh, gosh, you got hot all of a sudden. Pretty flowers, ain't they? You love nature, don't you? Did you ever think of settling down and raising chickens and things? Sure, hey, uh, chickens ain't hard to raise, and I just figured that if, uh, uh Yes, cannonball. Figured. <laughs> I thought I'd find you here. I was just leaving, Miss May. Honest to goodness, I was. Here's our chance to put on a good act. I don't think that was very nice of you, scaring Cannonball away. I'm not interested in what you think. Why do you always carry a chip on your shoulder? I'll quit picking on her. Don't you think she has troubles enough as it is? You keep your nose out of this. If I want your advice, I'll ask for it. Look here, Jeff. Just because I work for you doesn't mean I have to put up with that kind of talk. Oh, getting touchy all of a sudden, is that it? Or is it because you're soft over her? Pack up your duffel. 
You're fired. Just a minute. I can use a man like you. Say the word and you're hired. Thanks, miss. I'll be there in two shakes of a cow's tail. Nice work. You'll find your time waiting for you in the office. that gun at me. I got a weak heart. All in arch and seven motherless kids. You playing with dynamite when you're interfering with the Brent line? Shut up and throw down that strong box. Give him a hand. Yes, sir. Get back in there. Hands away from the guns now. Forget the Halliday line for a while. From now on, I want you to concentrate on just one thing. Get the Durango kid. We'll get him if we have to comb the whole country. I'll save you that trouble. Don't look so worried, Brent. This is just a social visit. Listen, if it's money you're after, I'll pay you well to leave my line alone. Thanks, but I'm not after money. I just like the excitement. And why don't you go after the Halliday stages as well as mine? Because your men have left the pickings mighty slim. Besides, Halliday has enough trouble. Waiting trial for the murder of a man that you killed. I didn't kill Dan Waring. It was... it was Halliday. I just heard that you did. Who told you that? Never mind, that's my business. Now turn around, all three of you. Keep looking straight ahead. Unless you want me to start shooting. Get out! What's this about Durango? He just called on us. Look around. He must be here somewhere. Having some more trouble, I hope, Mr. Waring? Yes, I'm looking for the Durango kid. He was here just a minute ago. Then I hope you find him. He'll pin your ears back where they belong. Oh, did you find him? No, he didn't. Jeff? I want that Durango kid out of the way, and I don't care how it's done. Well, leave him to me. Nobody can get rid of him any easier than I can. Any luck? Yeah, but it's all bad. Couldn't find a sign of him. Ah, you're a couple of fools. Where's Jeff? We left him out in the hills looking for the Durango kid. Hit the floor, boys. see him he headed out that way did i see him i chased him into town too bad you didn't get him sheriff well, one of your spurs is busted worrying thanks i hadn't noticed it this must be the other row just found it 
Yeah, that's it, all right. You know, wearing the Drango kit is a peculiar kind of a cuss. How's that? The other day, he sent me everything he'd stolen from the Brent stages. Asked me to keep quiet and see that the owners got it back. Why do you think he did that, Sheriff? I don't know. Maybe he don't like the way Brent does things. And it could be that he was more than just a friend of your uncle. Serenade. What do you want over here? We just quit, Brent. We'd like to go to work for you, ma'am, if you'll let us. Gee, let us sure be swell having you here. you quit? Found out that Durango Kid always fights for the right. He's out to get Brent's scalp. That's enough to convince us that Brent's up to no good. So we up and quit. All right, then. You're hired. Show them where to put their things, Cannonball. Yay! Come on, Nanny! <laughs> I bet somebody put that thing down in front so I'd fall on. Let's have Things a little, but just graze me. He'll be all right in a little while. Thanks, Tex. See you later. Huh? 
I'm just about all in trying to catch up with that hombre. He's slippery than grease. I'll say he is. If you haven't any further orders, Mr. Brent... No, I'll... you better get some rest. <laughs> I guess this riding out nights has given me a little touch of lumbago. I can sympathize with you. I used to have it pretty bad. If I were you, I wouldn't worry anymore about the Durango kid. Why not? I've got that postal contract all but sewed up. I got the bank to sell me an overdue note of holidays, and I'm going to put an attachment on his property tonight. Uh-oh. In that case, his daughter won't be able to run the line until she meets that note. Exactly. I happen to know the Halliday funds are down to bedrock. Well, I'll just quit chasing Durango. See you later. Didn't know Halliday owed the bank any money? He doesn't. But I wanted the Durango kid to think so. The Durango kid? He just walked out of here. Jeff? Yes. I've been wondering how the Durango kid managed to escape all those traps we laid for him. But I got the answer when I patted Jeff on the arm just now. I don't get you. He's got no more lumbago than I have. I felt the bandage on his arm that covers the spot where I hit him. Why, then let's get him right now. Why all this talk about a note? As bait, Mac. To sweeten a nice little trap for him. kids work. I guess it must have fallen accidentally. All right, boys, clear the road. Oh. expecting company, but you're just in time for some good old sourdough biscuit. Oh, there we are, Waring. What's this all about? Stop stalling. It won't do you any good, Durango kid. <laughs> this sure is a joke on me. I'm not joking. Don't be a fool, Brent. Do I look like Durango? Search the cabin for his black outfit and my briefcase. Look around for his white horse. Hey, what makes you so sure I'm the Durango kid? Roll up your left sleeve and you'll see. Oh, you mean this? Yeah, that's where I winged you the other day. You didn't do that, Brent. 
No? No, the Durango kid did it. I told you I had lumbago because I didn't want it known that he'd outsmarted me. This is the horse wearing usually rides. There ain't a sign of that white one. No luck, boss. He must have buried the clothes and your bag. Sure I did. I buried the white horse, too. Now you're convinced you're wrong? No. I'm taking no chances. That mail contract means too much to me. There he goes now. Hold it. Let's get after it. Are we all ready? Get out of the way. Take two men, circle around, and bottle him up. I'll circle around from this side. Let's hurry and change. the doctor. Get their horses. Eight weeks ago tonight we parted. It's so hard to realize we're through. When we quit, you said you'd always love me. Now I wonder if you feel the way I do. I'll never forget our days together, even though we know they're very few.
gosh, Nelly, I won't if you feel the way I do. <laughs> Uh-oh. Who's this? Miss Halliday? This is Mr. Spencer, postal inspector from Washington. He just arrived here. How do you do? Glad to meet you, Mr. Spencer. Do we get the mail contract, Inspector? Well, for the moment, no. And neither does the Brent line. Our reports on the progress and merits of your respective lines shows very little difference between the two. Well, then how do you intend to judge which line should get the award? Well, frankly, I don't know yet. Might I make a suggestion? Well, of course. As long as speed is one of the main considerations, why not give the contract to the winner of a stagecoach race? Well, that's not a bad idea. Is the race agreeable to you, Miss Halliday? Suits me fine. Very well. Then we'll iron out the details later at the hotel. See you then. Hey, boss. Think you'll have much trouble winning? It's up to you to make sure we don't. I'm going to drive our coach myself. Well, Jeff, an hour from now, and it'll all be over but the shop. Miss Halliday? Mr. Brent? Are you both ready? I am. So am I. Fine. Well, good luck to both of you. Thank you. May the best man win, Miss Halliday. Yes. Keep your arm close to your body.
Well, Miss Halliday, the contract is yours. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a rather shallow victory with my father still in jail. You got him tied up there good and tight, boys? Yeah. I ought to punch you right in your nose. All right, you cross rounding, you better talk if you know it's good for you. And talk Wait quick. Them. On time. Now get over the three of you and face that wall. And don't look back. I don't get it, kid. I thought you You would... thought I was after you and your boys. But it's Brent I'm after, for personal reasons. He double-crossed a pal of mine, just like he's double-crossing you. What do you mean? Just now, as the race finished, I heard him tell the sheriff that you killed Waring. Said he had proof, too. Why, that double-crossing two-timer? Sure, I killed Waring, but he paid me to do it. I thought you'd bite. All right, Sheriff. He's all yours. I'm going after Brent. All right, McMasters. The sheriff wants to see you, Brent. Me? What for? For instigating the murder of my uncle. You're... Oh, so it was you after all, Waring. You're pretty smart, but you can't pin your uncle's murder on me. I don't have to. McMasters has already done that. Come on. You mind if I get my hat and coat? Go ahead. I'll get your hat and coat. I'd like to stay a little longer, Mr. Holliday, but I've got some business in Nevada. Anyway, with Brent occupying your old cell and Tex staying on, you won't need me. Goodbye, Jeff. Goodbye, sir. Thanks. Thanks for everything. Goodbye, Mary. Take good care of Tex here. I don't want to lose him. You won't. <laughs> so long, Tex. So long. I know I'm not much to look at, and the uh, pigs ain't put in, and I figured, uh... Can you read? See that line? Well, read it to me. Will you marry me? Yes! <laughs> you can change the name of an old song, rearrange it and make it swing. Oh, no. I thought nothing could stop me from loving you, but time Luck to you, may God bless you. God bless you. I can't say I won't love again. Oh, no. You've gone your way, and now I'll go mine. Cause time has changed everything. <laughs> <laughs>